there must be a management system that should harmonize or cross-reference with other units. Then, we have the information security management. So this time, it is more, it is more focused on the information security itself. It involves the supervision and making of decisions necessary to achieve business objectives through protection of the organization's information assets. So we should manage. Sometimes when we do procure solutions, hardware or software it may be, and we are saying we are done. Everything is in place. We shall relax. No, there should be supervision. There should be proper monitoring. That's why aside the cybersecurity unit should have an information security management wherein it could continually monitor, not just monitor, continually to analyze, and of course, continually to improve the cybersecurity unit itself. Another definition, management of information security is expressed through the formulation and use of information security policies, okay? So this could be achieved again using your security policies, procedures, and guidelines, which are then applied throughout the organization by all individuals associated with the organization. That's why what I have discussed yesterday, that this is the business of the rest of the organization. This is not just the business of the top management. So procedures, security policies, procedures and guidelines should be applied to all members of the organizations, no exceptions. Because sometimes when we think that when we talk about cybersecurity, oh, okay, this is only applicable to the, all those persons who are inside the cybersecurity unit. No, it involves the rest of the people inside the organization and proper dissemination and proper awareness of the security policies and procedures and guidelines should be always uh, done inside the organization. Then, uh, if we have the security management, management system, we do have principles that we need to follow. So first principle is awareness. Awareness of the need of the information security. So it is not just the top management. There should be a cooperation from the whole. If we decide to, if we decide to enroll all the MAC addresses of our devices, mobile devices, inside, inside the organization, then we should do so, including those who are under the utilities, even those under those who are cleaning the our comfort rooms. When we decide. When we decide to tell everyone, okay, aside from the computers or laptops that we are using in the office for, for organizational use, for sure, your, your, your mobile phones are not part anymore of your organization. It is your personal thing. So if we decide that there should be a security policy that you should enroll all those MAC addresses of your or serial numbers of your devices, then all must comply. Because sometimes we are just careless that we are just focused on those devices and equipments that are found inside the office. We do forget about the devices that we own personally. So whether we like it or not, I'm not, say, I'm not saying uh, this should be done, but then it is very clear. Most of us are using our mobile phones every now and then as part of our communication process. So if there is a policy for that, then we should all. We should all imply, even up to the top management, even up to the president. So there should be an enrollment because for sure you are accessing the Wi-Fi or the internet access of the organization. If you're accessing the internet, internet, applica internet application of your organization, for sure there is a possible, there is a possible way that breach or attacks will come from your phone going through the internet and then going inside your network. So sometimes we are focused on just things, but then we will forget. Others have to set to mobile phones. So we must make sure that we must enroll. So again, just as an example for the enrollment of the mobile phones. Again, awareness is very, very much needed. Then second principle is that we have the responsibility. Assignment of responsibility for information security. Giving responsibility to ensure that key tasks are done with respect to your information security system is important. Sometimes, especially us in the SUCs, we do are given the special order and then all the responsibilities are given there. But those are just in the paper. They are not even done heart to heart. 
or that th those are not just basically for, I just don't know, for documentation process or probably, let me say, this is the saddest thing for compliance that we do all of those responsibilities. And mind you, with all the responsibilities that is given or listed, you are just functioning as one, one responsibility there. So we must make sure when those responsibilities are assigned to us, we must make sure that when we list those responsibilities that is given to us, we must exercise our responsibility as well. It is not just a paper or for basically for compliance. The third principle is management commitment. Oh, this is very, very important. When we do say, when we do, when the top management will tell us, okay, we need to have, we need to make sure that our organization is free or cybersecurity free. We are free from all breaches or attack. And awareness, it must start from the top management. Incorporating management commitment and in the interests of the stakeholders. So again, this could be done, of course, uh, still more on the awareness. So ensuring that their top management is involved in supporting your information security management system approach is critical. Without, you will fail. Of course, it will fail without them. Budget comes from them. So, and all the approval of the policies and standards. So we must make sure that they have a commitment. Oh, number four, this is the most important one. Get some values. Values are very important. Uh, in school, students would, also, would always ask, I have learned nothing in school. But no, what is important in school is not about, about the knowledge. What is important is the values. The values that they would learn along the way. Knowledge is just 10% when they graduate. But then, the most important thing is the values. What is the purpose of learning a lot of things without values? That's why when we do hire people inside the organization, value, we also check on the values that they have. So enhancing societal values inside the organization is very important. Secrecy, openness, respect, and trust is very important. And it must also be uh, not just for the top management, it's just for the rest of the organization to have values. Then, principle number five, risk. Again, risk assessment, determining appropriate controls to reach acceptable risk levels of risk. So, this is what we have done yesterday. We, we now identified what are our possible risks. Because by having those, identify those possible risks, we will now have the guide of what are the possible controls that we would like to work on. We would like to identify what are the best controls. We would like to know what are the most applicable or the best or high impact controls that we will have in order for us to solve those risks. And mind you, uh, we talk about ISO standards. It is always a risk-based approach. ISO is always a risk-based approach. It always asks for risk because this is a standard which is very, very proactive, which tries to identify problems before it occurs. And then if, if first things happen, if it do occurs, what are the possible mitigation? Plan, do, act scenario, which is really very, very much of an ISO thing. Then we have the, it, it should be integrated. It should be integrated. Security incorporated as an essential element of information networks and systems. Uh, it is not just, just in the cybersecurity unit. It must be integrated in all units. Security and the thinking behind the security of your information shouldn't be a bulk or it needs to be designed as part of the thinking process. So it should be the business of the rest of the unit, not just in your network, in your systems. So integration of all of these things. Again, everyone's involved, uh, self-explanatory, active prevention and detection of information, security incidents, we have discussed that by having those awareness could help us prevent and of course could help us detect possible ins security incidents that may happen inside your organization. Then uh, principle number eight, everywhere's involved, uh, ensuring a comprehensive approach of the information security management. So to bottom, no? not just the work of the cybersecurity. 
Uh, and then, of course, the last security principles that we have, the last security principles that we have uh, is, of course, the continual reassessment of information security and making of modifications as appropriate. So let's face it, as you know, this is coming the right, coming right, any system without the use of continuous improvement will either die or lack of care. So no matter how good your system, there will always be changes needed, improvement made, and need to understand and embrace that. So it should be involved. It should continuously improve. As I have said, uh, information technology is a fast-paced technology. It changes every second. So as we continue to improve, we continue to also to check the skills and uh, knowledge of the hackers because it also continually improves. So that's why uh, usually top management would like, uh, are very hesitant uh, in investing on in all of these things because it is a very fast pace. So let's face it, three years is a lot of time already for investing for another equipment or another applications because of the fast pace. And of course, the continued safe that. Okay, so having a security, infor uh, information security management principles, then we move forward to identifying what are those information security management system components that we would like to focus on. So again, it's top of our list. It's the policy. And having that policy, it will identify the roles, accountabilities, and responsibilities of persons designated in those areas. And then uh, it's also in those policies that we should have a process, a process that would guide us, especially in the implementation and monitoring of the information security in the organization. Then of course, number four, uh, we're, there should be a documented information. Why is there a need for us to document information? It's very important that all things are documented because people come and go, that's number one. People come and go. And then by having those documented information, we could always try to assess and try to have a copy in going back if possible breaches or attacks happen that we could try to take a look and probably reassess on the best possible risk that it has created. And of course, provide a mitigation what that risk has given us. Then uh, number five, we have the information security risk assessment. So by having that uh, information, we could always reassess our risk that, that possible risk might come in the near future as more and more crimes are being created, more and more uh, attacks, possible source of attacks are given. So we must continuously uh, reassess the risk that our system have possible in terms of our assets. Then, of course, if we do continually have risk assessment, we continually to have risk treatment and controls. So again, uh, we continually to modify our controls depending on the risk that we assess. So this is uh, uh, changing every now and then because possible risks are created. And of course, possible controls should be also in place in order for us to uh, be free from all those risks that was given to us. Then, uh, that we do have identify what are the possible critical success for factors. So first, again, it's very, very clear that uh, there should be a clear-cut organizational context 